<laughs> Tom Rockliffe is our guest tonight. Uh, he's in South Australia, of course, with the Port Adelaide Football Club. Uh, Tom, welcome to the show. It's, it's really disappointing for Port Adelaide in their 150th year. You're all set to wear the prison bars in the showdown game against Adelaide uh, and everything's been put on ice for a little while. How are things going over there, mate? Yeah, it has been. Obviously, uh, thanks for having me. It's, it's an interesting world we live in. It feels like the whole world's almost come to its knees and um, we're in an unstable situation at the moment. So, unfortunately, we uh, didn't get the opportunity to pull out our jumper in front of all our supporters in round two. But hopefully that opportunity is not too far away and um, by the looks of it, it probably won't be in front of a crowd. But it'd be great to have footy back so that we could get some normality back into to our lives and into... Um, everyday Australians lounge rooms. Hey, Tom, before we get to how you've been entertaining yourself over the past two or three weeks, uh, we hear all players say uh, this pre-season's been as hard as we've ever done. How hard are you personally training in comparison to what you would be doing you know, over November, December? Because it's, pretty, it's like another mini pre-season. Yeah, it is. So I think um, because we've got that big base under ourselves and we've been training since November, well, probably before, to be honest, September, October, you start your off-season program. So it's just about maintaining that as best we can. It was obviously a little bit tricky in the first two first week um, after we after the round one game because we came back and the team that travelled was in isolation. So we were left to our own devices at home. And if you didn't have anything, you couldn't really train because we couldn't leave our house. So after the first week, we had some equipment dropped off by the football club and tried to get back going. And then when we got the opportunity to get out this week, we started our running program and... Hopefully it's, uh, that takes us up to May 4th, all things going well, and then we can resume uh, the season or build up for another three, three or four weeks and hopefully resume the season in early June. We talked earlier tonight about the players and the so-called or not PR war. With hindsight, were you wrong to talk about the bushfire game and the money you raised and raise things like investment portfolios that you copped a bit of stick about, that interview? Uh, in hindsight, probably uh, the bushfires, I think we were just trying to highlight that the player's um, heart is in the right place. And when it was communicated about the 22 games and we only wanted to play for money was, was just so far off the mark. And we we wanted to play so that so many people could stay in, in work. And we've seen it's pretty much been an industry shutdown and how many people have been affected by that. And the investment property comment uh, was probably more related to my situation. I only had a house up in Queensland, so I was thinking investment property on that front. And... Um, I know that I've got to make repayments on that, but I was trying to um, explain that we're just like any other Australian and we have expenses as well, but um, it, it didn't probably come across all that well. And um, I apologise for the communication on that front. It was just more of elaborating on that AFL footballers aren't immune to uh, the consequences that everyone's going through and the hardships at the moment that everyone's living in. Um, it was just an opportunity to, to negotiate not negotiate, but come up with a, a resolution so that we had all the facts on the table and then we could move forward from there. And, and I don't think we wanted to do a negotiation when we didn't have all the facts. Um, and there was so much uncertainty around it. It's, it's hard to agree to something if you don't know the situation and how long we're going to be out for and what the situation was moving forward. So I think um, in the end, it was played out in the media and that's the way we were living because there's there's something that we needed to comment on um, daily in the media and it probably got out of, out of hand and in hindsight it probably would have been better if we played it out behind closed doors and, and didn't have a running commentary on it. Yeah, fair comment. OK, Tommy, back to the footy, mate. Back to your strength. So, Kenny Hinckley, been a very good coach, big impact at Port Adelaide in this year. A lot of noise around Kenny and his next term. What has he gone back to his strength almost the Geelong way, the run and gun, the excitement, let's score heavily? Or has he stuck to the slower football, build it up and maybe lock it in? Have you discerned any change going into this year? Um, I think the way we played in round one was a little bit different to the way we want to play. Obviously, the conditions up on the Gold Coast, we had to play a little bit more of that surge, yeah. surge and territory yeah. game. Um, but throughout the pre-season, we've sort of tried to emulate what we've done in the past and, and probably we feel like our running game's a real strength of ours. So it's something that we've tried to emulate uh, throughout the pre-season and really give ourselves a really good opportunity to, to win games of footy. And I think we've tried to tweak a, a couple of things. Last season, we had the least um, 
inside 50s against and the most inside 50s for. So it was just about converting our opportunities when we went inside 50 and then making sure that the opposition couldn't transition and when they did go inside their 50, we didn't let them score. Tom, we've really enjoyed your socials. Uh, you've been quite prolific. It's been great inside the house. We've met Shani and Jack, your, your, your son there. Let's have a look at a bit of this action. Uh, Karen, this is a bit looks like you at the Metro back is in the <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't match your moves, Ed. I certainly couldn't match the rock lifts. That's fantastic, Tom. Uh, thanks for sharing that with us, mate. Has that been a bit of fun for you and the other players, sharing all these things around the place? And particularly for the supporters. It's, it's just been wonderful. Yeah, it was. I think... Um, in the situation that we're all in at the moment, it's it's pretty dire and there's not a lot of enjoyment and stuff going around. So um, with Daniel Norton, the media manager at the football club, and, and Chris Davies sent through some ideas as well, who's a footy manager at the footy club. So we just thought, um, why not put some good videos out there that entertain our supporters and hopefully can put a smile on everyone's faces. And we felt like we had a really good impact. And as you saw, Jack was the star of the show and I was just his sidekick in the end. Hey, Tom, a hypothetical for you. Uh, the call comes tomorrow that uh, we're Port Adelaide. We're going to Tasmania to be in a hub for four weeks. You've got to move away from your family, but that's what we've got to do to get the season going. What is your response? Uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting discussion. I think initially it would be yes. Um, how that would play out over a four-week period would be would be very interesting. And I know it would be very challenging for my partner back here. We don't have any family or support here, so there's no doubt a four-week period being away from home would be really challenging. So it's something that you'd have to consider. And um, if we were, if she was to go back to Queensland with Jack, she'd have to go into isolation for two weeks as well. So there's a lot of scenarios that would have to play out there. My initial reaction would be yes, because let's get the footy back. Let's give... Um, the everyday Australian an opportunity to enjoy something in their lives in, in this um, pandemic that we're going through at the moment. And if if we can do that as professional footballers and, and put a smile on our supporters' faces and also the general public, then, then I think that's a real positive um, in the situation that we're in at the moment. Well, Tom, if uh, any sort of luck, if it all happens, mate, you'll be able to stay at home and just play uh, in South Australia. It might be a, a really good bonus for you, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. We wouldn't mind playing at Adelaide Oval or something uh, like that every week. Yeah, good on you, mate. Hey, Tom, we really appreciate you. Keep those socials going. We're really enjoying it, mate, and it's wonderful for our supporters. And I know just the kids who break for not only Port Adelaide, but all the teams are really enjoying what's coming through from the players. Thanks very much, buddy, for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me, guys.